Hey guys, it's Anders at the Baking Steel Studio. Today in our Zoom, we are making a 24-hour baguette. Hope you enjoy it. And if you did, please like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm Anders. This is the Baking Steel Studio. Today we are making our 24-hour baguettes. These are amazing. Simple and complex. We're going to get right into it. I'm going to mix some dough for you, show you how we do it, and then we're going to get into the fold and the uh, scoring and all the, the, the envelope folds and the complex stuff. We're going to try to simplify it as much as we can. And like anything else that we do, this takes practice. And I actually don't make baguettes often, so I need practice. So that's the fun thing. First, the flour. We're going to continue our tradition from um, Karen Springs. I have a combination of... Um, bread flour, Glacier Peak, and I have their all-purpose Sequoia. I merge these two, so I have half and half, 275 grams each of flour. Um, not necessary, this again, this is the recipe that we came up with. Um, we think it's a little, it makes a nice baguette. So let's get to this mixing. I'm gonna show you what I do here. This is a 24 hour dough. Okay, so I've got my scale here. I've got my flour here. Um, let's see here. Flour, bread, you know, combination. Again, just shake it up. Use my baking steel dough container, which I love. Um, on my scale, I'm gonna measure 18 grams of yeast. I've reduced it to 18. I got a lot of sh shit, pardon me, um, for the uh, 24. So let's see what 18 looks like. That's kind of sprinkled in there. And I just take my whisk and whisk it around. I like these containers, I can shake it too. So we're whisking a shake. So this is a, this is where I'm gonna do the day before I wanna make my baguettes, okay? That's it, we're just gonna shake my yeast, which is Fleshman active dry yeast. On this side, I'm gonna use my micro scale. Micro, the yeast is a tiny amount. Put my cap on there. One gram of yeast looks like this. It's a, a it's really micro. It's like 1.15 close enough. I'm gonna pour it in my hands so you guys can kind of get um it's a really small amount, get a little context there. So I'm gonna dump this into whoa, my container here. Go back to here. My yeast goes right on top, boom. And I'm gonna whisk that around. Right, a little shake, a little whisk, a little shake. Next, I'm gonna add my water and I tear it out. That's the T-A-R-E button. And I'm gonna add 360 grams of water. Just like this. A little bit more. There we go, exactly. Now I can put my scale aside, boom. And that, what I'll do is I'm just gonna take my dough scraper and just kind of let the water and the flour kind of hydrate, right? Hydrate that flour basically, boom. Once that's kind of taken shape, it's kind of forming, it's like it's clumped. Then I can get my hands kind of messy, right? Again, I have two hands. I'm gonna use one, put it inside the bowl here, and I'm gonna keep one clean in case my phone rings, then to my kids, or if they grab something out of the fridge, right? So one hand clean, one hand messy, and just literally just come in here and just pound, pound it and scrape it, right? And it's super sticky, that's okay. Let's create my hand in between, right? Get my clean hand, make sure I can roll up my sleeve a little bit. And I just kind of keep pressing. And I do this for about two or three minutes. Um, if I'd like, I can, I can um, clean out my bowl in between, which I, I like to do a little bit. But for now, it's formed one big mass of dough. Let's, let's just pretend this is completely done the way I like it. I'm not gonna spend two minutes doing this for you. Um, that's my dough. 
scrape my hands off. I will next take my lid, put my lid on, right? I'm gonna let that sit for 24 hours. Back to this picture, me washing my hands, <laughs> um, my one hand, right? And now, so 24 hours later, we're gonna fast track to right now, pretend I did this yesterday, which I did. Um, we're gonna portion this. We're gonna portion this into however you like. I like to do about 200 gram um, dough balls, a dough, no, dough. I just peel, I just peel off 200 grams. I plop it down on my counter. I do this three or four times. I divide it equally, however you think you wanna do it. That's more or less what I'm gonna show you now. So I'm gonna to get to the next day, how I form an envelope fold. So I'm going back to top down here for you guys. I can see my surface here. I'm gonna lightly flower, right? Slightly, and take a piece of dough right out of that um, container. I measured 200 grams, right? 200 grams of flour. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna literally just kind of pat it down. I wanna knock the air bubbles out. Try to make it like a rectangle. Right, just pat it down. I don't want air bubbles in my bag yet. So that's why we press. Get sticky, little flour. That's it, okay? Got my square. Let's do the envelope fold. So I, what I do by that, I take one edge, fold it over and I kind of pinch it lightly, right? I turn it around. I take the other side and I pinch it slightly. Okay, and now I take this, I turn it again, and I fold it this way in half, I pinch, just like that, and now I'm gonna roll it and pinch again, just like this. And you can see it's starting to square off a little bit. I'm gonna put that seam side down, just like this. Now I've got a really nice, let's see, rectangle, and that's one of them, right? And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna cover this now and let this rest, so I would do this, get a damp cloth or something and let it rest for 30 minutes. And then I'm gonna do this again. After 30 minutes, let's, let's pretend it's been 30 minutes. I'm gonna take this out again and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take the seam side. This would be actually more closed up than this. Okay. And let's, after 30 minutes, I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. Now this dough hasn't rested at all. However, I can still flatten it out, right? Just like this. Again, knocking the air bubbles out, making sure it's not sticking. So I pick it up in between to make sure it's not sticking. If it is, it's a little flour. Okay. I'm gonna do the exact same folds over again. It would probably spread a little bit more if this was well rested. But I just kind of turn, close it, turn it over here and press it, right? And now I'm gonna roll, roll and turn. And you can see it's still nice and square, right? I'll let this rest for 30 minutes again. I'm gonna do that a total of three times, okay? And that's really um, three times. That's it. So now I'll put this aside. <clears throat> I did one earlier today. So this is this has been folded three times. You can see it's starting, it's a little bit flatter. <clears throat> what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, so you guys can see, I'm gonna shape, because I've folded it three times. Now it's time to shape our baguette. And the way I do that is I just kind of turn it over. Here's the seam. You can see it's pretty closed up, right? I want to keep that in the interior of the dough. So I kind of put that side up. My final shape of my baguette, I'm just going to do a roll. I roll it right in half, just like this, and I pinch. Okay. And then I roll it again, just like so. And I pinch this final edge. And some people will use their palm, right? I'm just going to roll my fingers. And there's my 
baguette, okay? Still pretty square. And what I'll do next, I'm gonna let this rest for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna do a roll. And guess what? I have another one. This one is kind of beat up. Um, actually, I'm not gonna even use that. It doesn't even look good. I just wanna show you what I mean here. This one does not look good at all. It's been kind of sitting. It's got a little crust on it from the, um, from the flour, and it's been sitting out too long. So here's my 30, I'm gonna go back to this one and I'm just gonna start my rolling process. So what I do is I just kind of lightly start in the center and I press my hands to the X outside of the walls. So if I turn, gently, just gently roll. Just like this. You can see it's starting to get longer and longer. I like these pointed edges. And I can stretch this really thin or I can continue keeping it like this, this size here, this is about 12 inches. I like my edges looking really good, right? Seam side down, there's my baguette, okay? I would let this probably rest for another, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Then what we'll do is I'm gonna take my um, a knife or a lane, they call it. I don't have a lane here yet. Okay, and I'm gonna score it. And by scoring, all I do is gently kind of, you want something, this is nice, it's a perforated knife. A, a razor blade works really well too. You kind of work, work fast. I kind of hold one edge. I kind of just, just slightly at an angle, boom, boom, boom. I'm doing it four times, four times. There's my, my score. Well, those are great scores. Let's see if I can get a little deeper in there. Right, a lane would look a little better, but it's still, you get the point. That just helps this thing breathe a little bit. I like to cook my um, my baguettes on parchment paper. So I'll grab a piece of parchment. This is a small one. I'll place my baguette on my parchment. I'm only doing one here, and this thing is ready to bake. Let's get up here for a second. You guys can see me. So I've got my um, baguette made. We typically make two or three at a time. Um, I like to use my peel um, or a our breadboard, which is really cool. I have one over here. And I'm gonna bake this in the oven at like 425. I'm gonna launch this right now. My oven is preheated. Something right here. My oven that I'm actually kind of 400, still at 400. Big 425. I can throw some ice cubes in here to create some steam. Watch this, right? I throw this in my oven. Boom. I take my ice cubes. I just literally toss them in. It. I create a little steam. That thing's gonna bake for about 15 minutes. I'll open the oven up, give it a check. Um, after five minutes, I'm gonna, I mean, I'm sorry, I will, I will bake it for another five minutes after I open it up. And about 20 minutes later, I'll have what I get. I made some already. You can see, almost, almost cool. It's a little crooked, but that's okay. Still awesome. Um, and that's my bread. You guys, if you top down here, you can see it. Boom. You can see skinny. This is skinny, the one I just made. And that's it, guys. That's our baguettes. They're awesome. Made a couple this morning, right? They're cool, beautiful, tasty. Can't wait to taste it. Let's, uh, let's get to some questions. That was like a quick five minute tour of how to make a baguette. Let's get to some questions. Questions. Oof. All right. Looks great. Can, um, Yes, so my yeast, if someone asked how much yeast, and by the way, I'll follow up tomorrow's email with uh, a, probably a shorter video of how I did this, um, and then all the ingredients, but this was about one gram of yeast. Thank you, yeah, it's, they're amazing guys, super simple. Again, take your time with the fold. There's no right or wrong answer, just be gentle. Uh, my shaping's not bad, right? I haven't done these in a few months. That's pretty cool. You can make, I made this pretty skinny, which I like. 
This one's not as straight, but we like artisan. Not everyone's gonna be perfect, right? Very cool. Uh, I'm so happy that helped. Thank you. Um, could you please explain when to use ice cubes and when to use a metal bowl over the loaf? That's a great question. Now, I don't have all my equipment here yet. It's still in storage, believe it or not. It'll be coming this summer. A bread, so <clears throat> someone asked, I want to create some steam. So I'm just throwing some ice cubes in my oven to create some steam. It does create steam. However, a bowl, like an inverted um, aluminum bowl, we just kind of stick it on top of, or like a hotel pan, which would be the size of a baguette. I will sneak some ice cubes in on the steel and I'll throw my bowl right directly up over on top, inverted. And what that's gonna do is keep that steam really, really tight inside those baguettes. After about 10 or 15, like 12 or 15 minutes, I'll remove the bowl and let it bake and let the crust set at that point. So the bowl, the stat would do a better job of creating a crust with a bowl. Excuse me, not necessary. I didn't use a bowl with these. And this has, you can hear that. It's got a nice, it's got a nice crust sound to it. Not as intense as like a bowl would do, but awesome nonetheless. Uh, let's see. I didn't catch it if you added salt to the flour when you mixed the ingredients and how much. Great question. I did add salt and I added salt directly to the flour and I whisked it. Um, really important to whisk because I don't want the, the salt to come in direct contact with the active dry yeast because that can kill off the yeast. So we're mindful of that. Um, a small batch like this, I just whisk it around. If I'm doing larger batches, I might want to dissolve my salt in water first just to prevent that from happening. But otherwise, it works great. So there's a little whisk, a little whisk with the yeast as well, and then you add your water. I hope that helps with that. Great. Um, is there a parchment placer placed on the baking steel? Yes. I When I'm making breads, typically I will add... Um, I'll use parchment paper because it's just a lot easier to launch. Um, we have these like breadboards too that we use that kind of help it's bigger on our site. We'll put that on the, um, they're kind of nicer for baguettes because you got the whole square to work with. Those are great. Um, I use parchment because it's easier to, for bread. I'm not, not typically never using a broiler with bread. So I, I'm not afraid to use parchment paper. The only time I've, I'm really hesitant of parchment is when I'm using the broiler. And that's for pizza, but for bread, boom, no problem. Your bread's going to still crisp up really nice. I hope that answers that. You want to cut open to see the inside? Let's rip it open. How about that? Let's just take it. Here's one. Um, just rip it. I'm gonna, this is like the best way to eat bread, right? Just kind of rip it and see the, the holes, the crust. I mean, the TARDIS, can you, I don't think you can see this way, right? It's a beautiful baguette. It's got a really nice crust around it. Let me see if I can get a top down here. You guys can see better. See that nice whole structure? This is like a 65% hydrated dough. So not super moist, not a lot of water, but good amount. Really crusty. And as Karen Springs, give me some butter. It'd be amazing. All right, so let's get to, um, I put ice cubes in a preheated small cast iron pan on the bottom rack, a brilliant idea. You know, a place where you can contain your cubes, slide them in. Some people even put like, like rags and, and water them to create a steam effect. To be honest, like the best way to create steam is to use an inverted bowl, hands down, uh, great. Um, you can get those on Amazon and they're good for salads too. Uh, let's see, I put ice cream, but how much salt? Okay, so the salt content for 550 grams of flour, we used 18 grams today. In our recipe, we reduced it. We were at 24, cut a lot of flack. People thought it was too salty. So we reduced it to 18. Still, still got a, a good amount. That's great. Can you use a stand mixer for the initial mixing instead of by hand? Yes, no doubt you can clearly use a hand mixer, no problem. Um, just, just be mindful again, saying, I mean, that's gonna do a better job than your hand would. We just do a really rough. And I like, again, I like my baking steel dough containers, which by the way are back in stock, shipping out now. We have some 
um, pre-orders were getting out, but they're back in stock. So um, they'll be shipping this week and next. Even if it says pre-order, it's still going out right away or within days. The Bacon Steel Cookbook has a recipe with a poolish and that sets at room temperature for two days. Is it okay to wait three days if the life, if life interferes with the bacon plants? Yes, it, that's a great question. Let's say life gets in the way and I, was, I want to do a one day ferment and it ends up being three days. Just make sure it's in the fridge. The only other thing I'd be careful with is making sure it's a really, using a stronger flour. Uh, you want a, a higher protein content to handle the, um, the long fermentation. The glutens inside the bread begin to break down, which is great for digestion, but too long of a ferment, it might, um, well, it's probably good for bread still. So it'll be good. Uh, how much water uh, inside the bread is the best selling point? Yeah, I know, right? And with a loaf of um, butter, I mean, a loaf of butter, a pound of butter, soft, leaf butter at room temp or a good olive oil. Um, incredible, like insane, so good. And proudly made your own bread. Nothing like making bread and sharing. Um, how much water we use? 360 grams of water with 550 grams of flour, which equals about 65% hydration. I use my Inova steam oven. Do I steam 100% at 425 for 15 minutes and turn off steam and bake at 425? Yes, that's a great question. I do not have experience with the Inova oven. However, that would be a really nice technique. I would definitely, that would be perfect. Cook at 425, 15 minutes, and then turn the steam off. Nice to have that option. Leave it up to Inova for that. That's great. Um, do you know when the bread is done? Um, yeah, I mean, give it a knock at the end. Like, again, experience and practice like anything like i've made a lot more pizza than i have baguettes um that's not bad i guess and i made them make them this is my first time making them like so skinny which i think is really artisan and cool um it takes practice it takes a lot of practice shaping it um being comfortable you know also know you really can't mess it up you can't like mess it up too much the, the folds all we're doing is just trying to strengthen that gluten network so when it shapes like it's pretty straight other and i'm trying to knock out the bubbles too unlike pizza where we want the bubbles with bread not necessarily we're trying to make a baguette and if i didn't do those envelope folds this thing would be really crooked um it's just really strengthening up that 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 network of gluten in there how do you know so that's how i know it's done let's give it a little knock 20 minutes for bread color wise i could have went a little darker too which i like to do sometimes but this is a pretty good color i like it just practice. Um, do you, does the brand of yeast affect the taste much? I don't believe it does. No, I think, I mean, you could do a sourdough, which would be, have its own unique flavor, but I think the micro amounts, I don't think it does much to the flavor, personally. How would you adjust this recipe for sourdough? So like anything when I do sourdough, I would um, add, 20% of my starter into the recipe. So let's just, for even numbers, let's say I use 500 grams of flour, I would reduce that by 10% and I would reduce my water content by 10%, right? And I would add 50 grams of, my starter would be 100 grams, which would be 50 grams of flour and 50 grams of water. So I just substitute it in. That seems to do the, a nice trick for this size for this size dough. I only do 10 minutes at 100% steam on an OVA oven. That's a good point. So someone else has an ANOVA oven here and they only use 10 minutes of steam. Um, so Scott, does that seem to be a good number for those for like a 20 minute bake, like half and half? Is that about right? Can you bake at a higher temp? Yes, I bake these at 425. I've got one in the oven now and I'm gonna reduce it to 400 for the last 10 minutes. I, mean, I didn't put my timer on. Let's take a peek. Ooh, it's looking pretty good. Let's see. Uh, let me just take a peek at this thing. So this has been about um, 10, oh, really broke my seam. Makes sense. I didn't play on. I'm going to lower this to bottom steel. This one is needs about, um, I needed to rest it. I didn't even pinch my seam right, but it's been probably, oh, I forget what the question was. 
Can you bake it a higher temp? Yes, can you bake it a higher temp? Totally, 450, drop it down to 425. Just get a vibe for what it is. 20 minute bake typically is what these things take. Does the bread freeze well to reheat later? Yes, bread freezes amazing. Um, it just, it's a perfect food to freeze. So I would portion it off, like maybe a whole baguette, freeze it, and then just let it thaw out and um, heat it up. And I know one trick to heating up like bread is just splash a little bit of water on it, just a tiny bit, and then bake it again at 400 for 10, 15 minutes, it'll, or not even, five, five minutes, it'll reheat beautifully. Frozen bread is awesome. It's kind of like English muffins or just portion it out right. You're welcome, Lena. Awesome. How low, how low hydration provides confidence for the beginner bread baker? That's a great question. So our dough, our pizza dough, 70% hydration, definitely not beginner. With that said, I think anybody can do it. If, if you're passionate and you really are into it, you can do it at 70%, but it's not for the beginner. I mean, it's definitely not a beginner recipe, but you can do it. We can coach you through it. I think 70% is great. Now to dial that down, like our baguettes are 65. I know some people do higher um, hydration doughs. And if anybody's questioning what is hydration of the dough, remember it's the base, it's the water content based on the flour. Um, we used 500 grams of uh, flour. So if I used 50% water, it would be 250 grams. If I use 60%, it's 300 grams, et cetera. Um, that just gives you that ratio. You divide the water by the flour, that gives you the percentage of hydration. I hope that explains that. Late night Sammies. Yes, I like how you think. Um, they make great sandwiches, like incredible. Like fresh bread, man, so good. Uh, I hope that answers that question about confidence. Is this recipe written anywhere out that is accessible? Yes, it is. It's on Baking Steel site. You have a little search button on the top right-hand corner. Just type in baguettes. That recipe will come out. Also, if you're in class today, um, we are sending a follow-up email to all of you with the recipe in it, with a shorter version of um, a recipe. Hope that answers that. Can't wait to try it. Love your sessions. You learn so much. Thank you, Letty. I Love these sessions. If you guys have any requests, special requests, let us know. They'll get better and better as this kind of as we um, get our studio set up. I have a, vi a video guy coming soon to help with these classes to make it even better. We can get close ups, uh, but I hope they help. I hope they're helpful. If you guys have any more questions, drop them now. If not, I will. Um, we include the sourdough discussion on ratios in tomorrow's email. I don't think that's part of the email, Ray, but I can, if you want to send me an email, andris at bakingsteel.com, I, um, I can help write that out for you. You are, Mary, make the baguettes. They're fun. They're intimidating because of those folds, but the folds, again, just tightening up the gluten network. That's all we're doing. You can do it. And the, but, you know, worst case is the folds aren't great. You still get good bread, right? May not be... Perfect, but these aren't perfect either. They're cool. They're awesome. Um, when you make it yourself, it's awesome. Thank you, guys. It's safe to use my baking steel and my Nova oven on 100%. It sure is. Just remember afterwards, um, it's already been seasoned. You want to keep that thing seasoned from time to time. So remove it if it's got some moisture in it. Just make sure it's dry. Um, add some layers of seasoning and it'll get darker and darker. Um, it'll help protect that steel for a long, long time. I hope that helps, Kathy. You guys are amazing. Thank you for coming here today. And um, we'll see you uh, next week for class. I'm not even sure what we're doing. No, I think we're off next week because it's Memorial Day. But I think, um, I think I'll double check. If not, we'll see you. We got some cool classes in June. We're doing some tavern style pizza, special guests coming in to help us. It's gonna be amazing. So uh, can't wait. Thank you guys. We'll see you soon.